What's up my baby daddies and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do something a little different even though every single time I do makeup videos they never make it to my channel. We'll see if this one does. So today I'm gonna be showing you guys my everyday natural makeup look because people keep asking me for it on my Snapchat, on my Instagram. Y'all begging, stop begging. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So I just decided I was gonna show you guys what I'm doing now. So we're gonna go ahead and get around to it. Okay, so this camera likes to overheat, so I'm gonna hurry up and get into it. As of recently, I have been using these pencils that I got from the Dollar Tree. It was two in the pack for a dollar. That's why I was at the Dollar Tree. One thing I did notice, which probably isn't like, I don't know, you guys let me know. Every single time I use my eyebrow pencil, I have to sharpen it the next time I wanna use it. The eyebrow pencils that I used to use before, I didn't used to have to sharpen it every single time I wanted to use it, so this is a little different for me. But they do come out, they do show up, the color that I want them to show up, so I'm okay with it for the most part. First, I brush out my eyebrows, and I don't have that many eyebrows, and I don't have that much to brush out, but you know what I'm saying? You still gotta make it easier on yourself, so you brush it out, that way all the hairs are going in the same direction. Yeah, one thing I don't do is I do not do too much on my eyebrows. I don't make them too thick. I be seeing people really drawing eyebrows like this, and I have to let people know, like whenever I see my friends doing that, I have to let them know that's not cute. So. What you need to do instead, baby girl, is you need to start where your actual eyebrow starts and fill it in, right? You gotta make sure that there's no spots. You can make your regular eyebrow, the shape of your regular eyebrow seem thick. And then when it comes to the end over here, I go straight line. So that's gonna be your point, because I see a lot of people who don't have point on their eyebrows because they do this. I'm gonna show you. So when you do the top, you go to the top of your eyebrow a little further out and you do the same thing. Anyways, that's how I do it. And then when you get to the arch, you follow the arch of your brow, whatever your arch is. I have a few extra hairs poking out the top. Sometimes I'll follow it if I wanted my eyebrows to be thicker, but today I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go right in the arch how I like it, like that, see that? And then when it comes to the end, you see how I didn't go all the way to the end yet, but there's still already a point at the end. I'm not gonna do too much. I'm just gonna join it right here. It's gonna go into the same line that created that sharp point. I'm not gonna bring this all the way out like that because that's when you have a square eyebrow. Get me? So that's where a lot of people mess up with the eyebrows. So pretty much in this video, we're gonna be correcting some makeup mistakes or the mistakes that I see a lot of people make with their makeup. And obviously brows can be done so many different types of ways. Some people like their eyebrows to look more natural as if there's eyebrow hairs sticking out from their eyebrows and stuff like that. I just like mine to look like cartoon eyebrows, but not too fake. I don't like them too thick, you know what I'm saying? I like them to look like this. Now, at the front of these eyebrows, now a lot of people hate the whole, oh, why are your eyebrows ombre, blah, blah, blah. I just can't have a sharp square at the front of my eyebrows. That's not something I do. So what I do instead is I blend out the front and I brush all the excess color, I guess, out from my hairs. So that way you can actually see the hairs inside of the pencil. You can actually see my eyebrow hairs, right? So that way it's not just brown. And then when it comes to the front, I just do that until it's gone. <laughs> You see? So it starts where my eyebrows start. You get me? Those are my eyebrows right there. So even though it is ombre, they're still my eyebrows. And at the front, you can brush up a little bit. That's how I do that. So do you see the difference between this eyebrow and this eyebrow? I hope you do. So we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Normally I like my eyebrows to be black, so I'll go in with some black powder on top of this pencil, normally towards the ends. But I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side. So after you do that, you take your concealer. This is just basic makeup one-on-one. Take your concealer. My favorite one to use for my eyebrows is LA Girl Pro. And you could use the brush on the LA Girl Pro or you could use a different brush. The brush I'm gonna use is this little e.l.f. brush. It looked like that. I don't remember what it's called. E.l.f. Professional Eyeliner Brush. So yeah, the e.l.f. Eyeliner Brush. And I use that and I get enough on each side of the brush because it's so flat. I don't have to go dipping and dabbling. Just go one thing. You see I have concealer on both sides of the brush. So I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna kind of mark my territory, you know, so I don't use too much concealer because when you use too much concealer, it's hard to blend out. So you just put little dabs and I have some on each side of the concealer so I can add more or take away some, whatever. Now you see I kind of placed the concealer where I want it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and be really precise and play with the concealer that I have. The same thing on the top. With the top, I use the edge of the brush like this. 
and I just try to get exactly where I want it to start and get as close to the brow as I possibly can. And then when it comes to the tail, like I said, we want that point to point. So we're not gonna cut it off halfway. We're literally gonna go straight down all the way until it reaches the point. See how I did it? We don't cut it off, we just keep going straight. So we're gonna go over here on this side and do the same thing. Booyah. Brows are on fleek. Then I take my e.l.f. brush. This is a flawless concealer brush. So this brush is actually for concealer. And then I make sure all the concealer is blended out so that you don't see that I just put concealer right there. That's not the point of makeup. We're not letting these niggas know that we have makeup on, you know what I'm saying? That's not what we're planning on doing here. We don't have those intentions. So we just go ahead and blend this out. Now, if you have not moisturized your face at this point, I don't know if I have, I don't remember doing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I use the Clean and Clear Dual Action Moisturizer. It's oil-free. I already have like, I have good skin. So I try not to put too many oils on it because then my skin starts to act up. I use oils to remove my makeup, which is before I go to sleep. So my skin is able to, you know, suck up all that moisture. And then I use an oil-free moisturizer during the day because with all the running around and stuff like that that I do, my face creates its own oil. So I don't need to do that for when I'm sleeping. So it gets its moisture. I just don't put too much. <gasps> what am I doing? <laughs> Try to rub off my eyebrows. It's okay, when I'm done with my makeup, I go back and I do my eyebrows pretty much all over again. Anyways, after moisturizer, I like to use, sometimes I use this 14 karat gold primer. It has like this really gooey consistency. I want to say it's made with aloe vera, but I'm not sure. But I'm not using that one today. I'm going to be using a matte primer. This one is by Neutrogena. It's called Shine Control. And I'm going to use this one and then set it with baby powder to make it really shine proof because I have a lot of work to do today and I'm gonna be in front of a lot of lights. So because of that, I know I'm gonna get oily and we're gonna make sure that doesn't happen with this and the baby powder. Boom. Where my baby powder at? Regular baby powder. I know a lot of people say, oh, don't use baby powder. Oh my God, the country is going to be on fire. I say it in all my videos. I've used baby powder since I was a baby and I don't have that many issues. <laughs> You should worry about the meat that you're eating. It's baby powder. I understand all the bullshit baby powder went through and stuff like that. You know, they doing all them lawsuits and stuff. But that's for people that's putting it inside of them. Don't put it in your eyes. Don't put it in your mouth. Don't put it in your ears. Anyways, we're gonna continue. Um, the foundation that I've been using right now is this Revlon Color Stay. It is in the color 410. It's a little bit darker than me, so I really like that because it gives me this like rich. <sighs> I don't know how to explain it, but it look good. I'm gonna show you. See, it has like, I don't know, like I wanna say, um, it has orange undertones and that's good because I have orange undertones. I'm almost done. Wow, with this jump off. I'm almost done with it. Let me get some more. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, like it always hits you as a surprise when your foundation is finished. Cause you're like, wait, <laughs> did I really use that whole bottle of foundation? Damn, I'm ugly. <laughs> I'm fing ugly. Yeah, go ahead and blend it in. It's gonna look a little bit like that. Um, this brush is an e.l.f. brush that I've had for 17 years. All my brushes I've had for a really long time. I take care of my brushes. I wash my brushes with the Zote soap. I've had the Zote soap in my house since I was a child. My mom used to wash our clothes with that, so that's the reason why I use that to wash my brushes. And I think it's one of the most effective ways to wash my brushes because I tried like baby shampoo. I tried dish detergent. I tried regular shampoo shampoo. Just get the Zote soap. It's a dollar. Dollar Tree 99 cent store. It gets everything out too. And if you use that soap to wash your panties, make sure you wash it again without it in the washing machine with a different type of soap, something before you wear those panties again because that soap is powerful and you will get a yeast infection. The concealer that I use is Dark 40 by Colourpop. <clears throat> it's the no filter concealer and I really love this concealer. Let me do it, things I never do. So then I'm gonna show you guys how to blend out one part um, and then I'm gonna do the rest off camera because this is really precise. I use the Wonder Wedge. This is my favorite type of cosmetic sponge because for one, you don't get all the bacteria from using the same sponge over and over and over and over and over and over again. Like no matter what or how much you wash it, um, when it dries, it's gonna dry with a lot of bacteria that's in the air. So don't like that because it's a sponge, you know? And it absorbs a lot of stuff. But when it comes to blending out underneath my eye, I try to make sure I concentrate the color underneath my eye because when you 
you just start blending everything out really hard then you lose the color and you lose the highlight that you're looking for and a lot of people do that they just start blending or they use those hard ass beauty blenders and they're trying to blend out the of their under eye concealer and they don't understand why the highlight isn't as bright as they want it to be you have to be really soft underneath your eye and this is how it will look so this is what I do I'm not blending it hard at all I just keep dabbing it in the same spot and eventually the amount of product will evenly disperse all over your under eye and then you will have a seamless under eye so the most important part to blend is obviously the outside part because you don't want them to see the demarcation of concealer and foundation so that's how it should look and I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of this off camera and come back. Now, here we are, everything is blended out. And as you can see, now my face that looked a little bit too dark for me is the perfect highlight and low light for my skin. So you can see I have lighter parts here and I have darker parts here, darker parts here, darker parts. And then you can see the light and the dark. But my face, you can now see that light and that dark. And that's just why I tell people to get a darker foundation instead of a lighter one, especially if you plan on using a lighter highlight. Okay, that is a very important tip. All the tips I'm telling you in this video are important and that's why I'm telling y'all but that one in particular if you have the choice to go lighter or darker always go darker than your complexion okay a little just a little bit darker because you're definitely gonna go lighter with concealer and that's how you will look ashy and you'll look like you have a white face when you take pictures and stuff like that go darker for white girls because I do have some white baby daddies y'all you guys can go lighter as much as you want why because you guys are white we're different but when it comes to contour and bronzing white girls can go hard with that because they can use a bronzer and bronze the whole outside of their face black girls don't have bronzers for us bronzing for us is the same thing as contour so instead of trying to contour already contoured skin because we're brown already just use a darker foundation and then you can use a darker foundation as a powder contour which I'll show you in a second so before I put my baby powder on to set again I always do one more pass and the reason why I do this is to make sure I don't have any creases underneath my eyes when I do use my baby powder so I just flip the sponge around and I get a no the only time I bake is when I'm like retouching my makeup. Say I did my makeup this morning and then in the evening I don't want to redo my makeup all over again. That's when you're going to see me put a bunch of powder on and leave it on for like 30 minutes. But when it comes to like the beginning of the day, I'm not having a long day or I'm not sure how long my day is going to be. I just start off like this and I dust it right off because I don't like the powdery look. Okay. And that's another reason why I like these sponges though because you use this side for foundation concealer and you use this side for your powder. And if you like, you can put some powder on your eyebrows. Yes. Cause your eyebrow, I don't know, my eyebrow bone be getting oily fast. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and go in. So I have this um, palette that I got from, can't remember where I got it, but it's by Beauty Creations. And I just use this, ooh, I don't like looking at broken mirrors. The mirror's broken. <laughs> I use this color right here. There's a dark brown color. And I have so many of these palettes, you guys, cause I love this palette so much. This is my favorite palette of all times. It has a black in there, it has everything. Like I'll be going hard with this palette. If I'm traveling, this is the only palette I bring. Cause I'm traveling today actually. So I'm gonna bring the new one when I travel today, brand new because the colors are so bright and pigmented and it gets the job done, especially for brown girls. Like this is the one and only palette. Like, so I always use a brown color, a dark brown color for my lids on my everyday basis. It just looks the nicest, it looks the naturalist. So that's what I do. And I mix this brown, there's like a brown red right here and then there's a brown brown there and I just mix the two. And you see this color right here, this brown color at the top? I tore that color up because some days I didn't wanna use any color on my lid and that color was the perfect color for me to look like I don't have anything on my lid. So I tore that color up. So when that color is gone, I just use all the other ones. And as for the um, highlights, you can see this highlight up here is like a pink or shimmer, whatever. This one's like a rose gold one. Tearing that one up too. The other ones, they cute, but I don't have that many reasons to use them. Um, uh, blend out the outside of it, you know? And I try to make the base of it a lot darker than the top so that my eyes look a lot more sultry. So I put the dark brown 
on my lid and then I blend everything else on top out. So for my under eyes, I always like to use that same brown color. Regardless of what makeup look I'm doing, I normally like to put that same brown color underneath my under eyes and I mix it with the black. So it gives me like a dark brown color to put underneath here. And the reason why I like putting something underneath here is because when I don't, I find that the concealer looks like, oh wow, that's a lot of concealer underneath your eyes. So I always put something on my Allure lash line like this because of that, like I just don't want it to look too dramatic all the time. Sometimes I don't put anything underneath my eye and I do like that like bold look. I'll put on like big ass eyelashes and it'll give you that bold under the eye concealer look. But that's not my everyday look. That's like when I want, when I'm looking for a certain look, you know? So yeah, that doesn't happen often. For the most part, I do this. And this is an e.l.f. brush too. This one is called the smudge brush. That's what I'm doing, smudging it in. Then I go in with that color, the other color that I said that I'd be tearing up. I just take that and I put it in my inner corner and I drag it to the bottom. That is my everyday eye look. The brush that I'm using right now, I'm not even sure where I got it, but it says makeup for you. That's the only thing it says on the brush. It looks like this. It's just like, it looks like a pencil to me. See, I don't know how to explain it, but that's what I use. Go in there and give it what it needs. Right underneath the tail of the brow bone. And I make sure I blend it out around the corners. Okay, so you can see there's still baby powder on my eyebrows. I'm gonna show you guys something because a lot of people don't understand how setting spray is supposed to work. For not, my eyebrows are dripping a little bit. But I'm gonna keep all the rest of the baby powder on my eyebrows so I can show you guys what it looks like after I set. And this is the Mario Badesco Rose Water. That's what I've been using recently, but I also really like the e.l.f. And the reason why I'm setting before I put on my liner, my lashes, anything black is because that type of shit smudges and I'm not with the shit. So I'll be right back when I'm all dried up. All right, y'all, now we're gonna get it into the black stuff. No, actually, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go into contour. The contour that I'm gonna be using today looks like this. It is from Primark. Oh, hi, Mark. My mom got it in London, and go ahead, just look at it. If you're from London, yeah, maybe you can find that by the barcode or something, I don't know. I stole it from my mom. She bought it from Primark when she was in London. And now it's mine, but you can use several other things. Like I have one by Ruby Kisses that looks like this. Um, this one is the color Cognac. Then I have this one by Maybelline. It's called Superstay Full Coverage. This one is in the color Yaba or Java. So there's other companies, other brands that you can use. But this one I like it the best because that jump off is dark skin, baby. Okay. I'll go ahead and go in there and I give myself contour. And I try to blend it out as well as I can. That way it doesn't look muddy. Blending, you guys knew that? from day one. That's the number one key to makeup is being able to blend. Now, my makeup, I mean my hair, is gonna be looking raggedy this whole video. I hope you didn't thought I was gonna fix it. You did it, gray. Because I'm getting ready to do a hair tutorial. And my hair can't be done at the beginning of a hair tutorial, but my makeup can't not be done either. So I decided if I'm gonna do regular makeup, I should might as well show y'all. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just putting the shadow back into my nose, because whenever I do my makeup, sometimes my nose could just like disappear into my face, because my nose kind and, uh, doesn't poke out enough you see <laughs> it doesn't poke out much so I try to give myself my bridge back or bridge what you call this get my bridge back um but I don't do none of that extra contouring I don't try to make my nose look any different than what it motherfucking already is then I go ahead and put the rest that's on the brush all over my face and usually I don't like my chin highlight to be as bright as my under eye highlight so I make sure I put enough on top of it as for bronzer the bronzer I'm gonna use is gonna be by Amuse Cosmetics and this just reminds me of Rihanna's bronzer. Whoa! Because it is a really good bronzer, but what a lot of people forget, black girls, listen to me. I'm trying to tell you, you don't bronze. Bronzer for us is either blush or contour. So when Rihanna's bronzer that looks like this, it's in this exact color, it's a blush, but it is a bronzer. So this is a bronzer. You gotta use it like a blush. If you use it like a bronzer, put it all over your face, that's how your face looks red. And you, you've seen those girls with makeup and their makeup is beat, but it's like, why is your skin red? Like it doesn't match the rest of your body. So use it as a blush, um, only on your cheeks and sometimes on your nose. That's how I use my blush. I don't do it like a bronzer like the white girls. White girls are usually red undertoned, so it makes sense for them to use a bronzer bronzer, a red toned bronzer, even though there's other tones of bronzer for them. Have I showed you guys this highlighter palette that I have? Probably not, cause I don't talk to y'all about makeup that much no more, but look at these colors. I got this from the Fashion District, y'all. Go to the Fashion District and look for it. That's all I can say, cause I didn't get the address or nothing. The brand name is called Malibu Glitz. 
maybe you can google it or something i don't know but the one i'm gonna be using is this one right here it has like a red a gold and like a white highlight and i just mix it and i get that jumbo of rock wow i need to stop because i can keep going forever and ever well you already know what it is you put some on your nose i put some on my nose and on my bridge right here i like to put it on top of my lip because whenever i do my lips it makes my lips look pretty i don't know what it does but it does that and then a little chin a little forehead action you know not too much there but i'm seeing oh my god so now we're here and we're trying to show you how to put on winged liner. But first, I'm gonna do my mascara. Now, I don't have any bottom eyelashes, you guys, but putting mascara on your bottom eyelashes actually does a lot for your makeup, regardless if you have bottom eyelashes or not, because I really don't have any lashes at the bottom, or even at the top, to be honest. But putting mascara on it just automatically opens your eyes up. All right, now for eyeliner, this is the fun part, y'all. This jump off, first of all, takes so long. Second of all, it's so hard to get both eyeliners to look good. I would have to say that the easiest way to do it for me is to have a mirror really close to you. So let me give you an example. So here I have a little tiny mirror. So I'm able to actually see my eye really closely. <laughs> Girl, that eye is cute. That makeup is cute. I'm telling you, it's just the brown and the gold, just simple. But anyways, I like to start from the outer corner here and I make a little line and I make a few of them because I wanna see how far out I want my liner to go. And I'm really, the most important part is the point. So when it comes to doing it, if your hand is a little wobbly, gently set your hand on your face. You see how I found a point? That's where I want my point to be, right? So I'm not touching that place again. If I wanna make it, only way I'm touching that place again is if I'm gonna be making my wing longer. And I don't intend on making it longer, but that only happens if I mess up, right? So I start from right before, right before the line. Let's get closer, right before that line, we're gonna go here and we're gonna drag it. Okay, now I see how I made it so I can connect it. You see that? You see that? Okay, that's really important about your liner. You wanna make sure you get that point. So you once you get that point, you can't touch it again. So you just keep dragging it in until you get something that makes sense. And then when you get to like the middle, this is where I'm able to just make a line from here to there. This eyeliner that I'm using is from Forever 21. And I heard Forever 21's going out of business, so I'm about to go stock up. Cause where else am I get it from? Okay, so now when I look at it in the mirror, I think I want it to be thicker at the ends and I wanna straighten it out. I wanna smooth it out. Cause if you see, it's a little wobbly. So I'm gonna go in here. Boom. Because it's thicker now, I can make the point a little longer. Make sure you have a left liner on there. Otherwise you can mess it up. See that? Boom. If I touch it again, I'm ruining everything. So you gotta know when to stop. I hope you don't have a too much gene because you won't know when to stop. <laughs> I used to have that. I had to teach myself because I was like, ah. Especially since the last thing that you're doing on your makeup, you really don't wanna f it up. So now for the inner corner, because you guys know I like to do the little cat eye on the inner corner. What I do is I start from my lower lash line and I pull it out and then I just connect it from the top lash line. Same way I did this eye, I don't go all the way to the tip, I go like, to the middle. So now I'm gonna try and get the other eye to be identical and I'll be right back. <laughs> so while I was doing my other eye liner, which didn't turn out to be exactly the same, but they're cousins, they're not even sisters. They're not twins, they're not sisters, they're cousins. Anyways, I didn't necessarily explain to you guys the whole reason behind like the contour thing. I didn't explain it well, I don't think I did anyways. I feel like with white women, the reason why bronzers make sense, imagine having a white piece of paper, right? And you have a brown powder, you have brown bronzer, right? If you brush that bronzer on the brown piece of paper, it's gonna come out nice and brown and vibrant. With black people, we are already brown. Now getting a bronzer to put on top of our already brown skin, you're not gonna see the brown pigments, you're gonna see the red pigments, and that's what's gonna fuck us up. You get me? I just, I was like, I didn't necessarily explain it well, especially if this video is gonna be all the things that you did wrong with your makeup, then I might as well explain it a lot better. Now for eyelashes, okay, a lot of people up with eyelashes for a lot of different reasons. For one, you don't let your eyelash glue dry enough before you put it on your eyelids. For two, the placement, the 
the actual eyelashes. Sometimes they're shorter in the middle and longer on the outside. Some people put them the wrong way. Um, also, sometimes people have small eyes and they use big eyelashes. You know, it just all depends. But there's a bunch of different reasons why people's eyelashes look crazy. But for one, first thing that you need to do before you put on eyelashes, especially if you did all your makeup first, is you need to put on mascara. You need to put mascara on your actual eyelashes because your eyelashes will not be black anymore. If you just did your makeup, they will be brown, they'll be yellow, the color of your powder, the color of your eyeshadow. They're normally not black anymore. So that is really important that you make sure that your eyelashes are black before you put on black fake eyelashes, okay? The next thing, okay, when you look at your eyelash, I have one right here that's already used and there's no problem using already used eyelashes. That's actually, I recommend it because they have a little character to them, okay? So if you look at this eyelash, you can see that it's longer on this side than it is on this side. So if you look at this eyelash right here, you can see that it flares out towards this side and it's kind of scantier at the middle right here. So that means that these eyelashes, the longer ones are supposed to be on the outside like they're flying, okay? That's what we need to do. We need to make sure that these little eyelashes are on the outside of our eyelid. The type of glue I like to use is actually hair glue. And the reason why I like this glue is because it doesn't hurt me when I take it off. It kind of turns into like a rubber when it dries. My only downside to this hair glue is that it smells. So um, yeah, when it comes to trying to keep an eyelash on for the whole day or whatever it is, I definitely recommend eyelash glue. I don't know if there's any health effects to it. I don't know about none of that stuff. All I know is that I'm good. And I've been using it ever since I started doing makeup. Once I found out that you can use this on your eyelashes, I started using it. So I'm gonna go ahead and count how long it takes for me to put it on and I do it like this but you have to be really careful okay here's a here's a technique too because I hate when people open up my eyelash glue and start sticking shit in it that's so unhygienic right so with this glue tilt it over and then you're gonna see a little amount coming out instead of squeezing the bottle and doing like this hold the bottle like this and move the eyelash up and down okay all right now for eyelash placement that's really important. You have to be quick because sometimes that glue will drip out too much and then you don't know what to do and then there's too much glue on your eyelash. But you really just want the eyelash glue to be on the band and that's it. Now for placement, you want the inner corner of the eyelashes to be right at the place where it is comfortable, where you blink, where when you blink, you don't have an issue blinking and it doesn't irritate you. And also you wait about 30 seconds and I like to place it in the middle. Girls with curly eyelashes is a little different. Place it in the middle, then I grab one corner corner of it and I drop it directly where I want it to be and because of the type of glue it is it sticks and then I grab the end corner and I line everything up and I'm holding the eyelashes I'm not holding the band or anything I'm holding the eyelashes and guiding it with the eyelashes and I make sure it touches my skin because that is how the glue is gonna stick now, girls with curly eyelashes I think you should like use a curling tool to make sure that the eyelashes don't curl and they aren't in the way this Holding a little tiny mirror underneath so you can see where your plate where you place your eyelashes is really important, y'all. Like there's certain things, there's like little small things that'll little, little that will literally change your whole makeup game, okay? Holding the mirror underneath your eyes makes you see exactly where you place your eyelashes. Now, if I get really close, cause you can't tell I messed up a little bit right here. But that's another thing I like about this glue. Once it dries, it literally wipes off like that. So when I get close like this, you can see that the eyelash is directly on my lash line. And even though I put my eyeliner first, sometimes I try to do the eyelash first so I can see that it's directly on my eyelash line, but you don't necessarily have to do that. And then you can see how it looks like the eyelashes are coming from my actual eyelashes because of how close I put these in the corner of my eyelashes. Some people put their eyelashes too far out. You get me? Don't do that, okay? Now we're gonna do the other one. So I'm gonna count on this one so we can see how long it takes. And let me show y'all. So. See the little glue poking out? Look at this. And when too much is coming out, I just release the pressure that I'm applying and go real gentle. Take your time because the glue doesn't dry that fast. You can really take your time. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So we're gonna go ahead and drop that right in the middle and then grab the corner, drop it on my inner lash line, grab the other corner, pull it on top of the lashes. Now drop and then make sure you push it in with the eyelashes. So yeah, I don't use tweezers, none of that. I just use my fingers because I'm able to guide it a lot better with my fingers. Looking at my eyelashes, my lower lashes, they can use some more mascara. 
My last trick when it comes to eyelashes is put some mascara on them. It makes them look a lot more realistic. If you have those crazy big ass eyelashes, don't put no mascara on them. On those big old crazy ones, don't put no mascara on those. But if you have some regular ones like this, you have to base it off of your eye. And you have to try some different eyelashes. Like I really like these ones. I've used them like four times already. Yeah, I like them. So I don't know the name of the eyelashes because I threw the thing in the trash. I try not to keep too much trash because if you look at my desk right now, it look like I keep all the trash in the world but no I try to throw everything away so I don't have the name of these eyelashes but maybe one day I'll give them to you they're pretty big but I'm I do makeup so that's one thing you know what I'm saying now we're gonna go ahead and do the black in the brows like I told you guys I like my brows to actually be black so I'm gonna go ahead and take this black powder right here and fill in the outer corners of my eyebrows and as you can see, just the black in my eyebrow makes my whole eye pop out a lot more. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, I like light brows. It's all up to you. You could go out like this and it looks really good, right? You could even go a little lighter, it looks really good. I just feel like this is very dramatic. When it comes to pictures, you don't have to do a lot of editing and stuff like that because it comes out that way. So yeah, if I was to choose one, I would choose this one, but it's up to you. You like this one better or this one? So there's that. And then um, we're gonna go into our lips. So as for lips, I use a balm and I put that all over my lips to make sure that my lips are nice and smooth for the lip process. This balm is done, buddy. And after I put the balm on, I go ahead and wipe it off after a few seconds, like maybe 30 seconds to a minute because I want to be able to use my pencil. But once you use the balm and then wipe it off, you're able to remove dead skin, makeup, anything that will make your lips not look as good as they possibly could. Now this pencil is from Italia and it's in the color Espresso. You find a shade that's a couple shades darker than your skin complexion and that's what I use as like the base. When I used to do clients and stuff, it didn't matter their skin complexion. I would use a color like this and just depending on who it is, I'll just use a lighter hand or a heavier hand. Might I add that all of the products that I use are very cost effective, okay? So there's no reason. There's no reason, sweetie. After I finished putting the liner on, I just went ahead and put that balm back on and then rubbed everything together and this is the color it gave me. If I want, sometimes I like to be really cute about it and so I'll put on a pink color or a gloss or I'll put on a gloss and then a pink color so it's just up to you guys but this is my final look very cute very pretty you know just like oh, I didn't try that much buddy I didn't do that much I look the same <laughs> I look the same with or without makeup <laughs> you know if you guys enjoyed this video, if you like it, if you try it, make sure you let me know. Follow me on my social media, send me pictures. Let me see if you're doing better at your makeup after this video, okay? Oh, uh, while I'm here, let me just add, if you just took a little black and put it right here in your crease, just blend a little tiny bit of black in your crease, that will give you a nice, deep, smoky look for a night out, so yeah. Comment down below if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know, you feel me? Cause then I could start making more. I'm about to hire an editor so the video are about to start coming, 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 coming. Then y'all gonna be tired of me. Make sure you comment down below, show me some love, some support, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you haven't. Turn your bell notifications on, or what are those called, like push notifications. Turn on the notifications, all right? Cause I wanna see you back here, all right? I go out and do wonderful things in the world and make sure no drama comes from anybody but me because I'm your baby mama. I love you! Now give me a kiss. <laughs> mm. Keep Give me grace. God put a smile on my face. God put the smile on my face. God make me shine like the sun. God make me shine like the sun. Sometimes I feel like I'm the one. Sometimes I feel like it I'm ain't the one. my fault.